Good evening, everyone. Margo from the Prior Homestead, bringing you today a little bit of Scripture Sunday. Today, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about doubts and how our lives are affected, how our dreams and our futures and our realities are affected by the doubts that we carry with us each and every day. And those doubts aren't just our own doubts, but they're the doubts in our own faith. They're the doubts in our own belief. They're the doubts in our own, the humanitarian system. The doubts in people in general. <clears throat> Some things I'd like you to think about when I start reading scripture is about what can you do to help keep your thoughts and beliefs on your dreams and to continue bringing those dreams to life. What can be done to help strengthen you, strengthen your determination, and help you with continuing to have and keep your connection with God himself? Jesus, they, he gave himself to for us for our sins so that we could have faith in him the ultimate faith he gave the ultimate his life so we would give the ultimate our faith that's the least we can do is give complete 100 percent faith to him but yet we doubt ourselves we doubt ourselves, we doubt our families, we doubt our friends, we doubt everything in our lives, including God. We wonder how our dreams can come true when He's already seen our dreams. He's already seen the full extent of our lives. He's seen it. He's created it. He knows what's in store for us. When we start thinking that something bad might happen in our lives, we have to stop ourselves. We have to stop ourselves and start saying, wait, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. What is this talk? This negative talk? This negativity? This is not God talking to me. Would I talk to God like this? I'm talking down about my life and would I talk down to him about my life? And say, would well, you give me a horrible life? You just you give me this horrible place to live and these horrible friends. When we come, turn to him and say things like that, in return he might be saying, I give you free will. I'm showing you your job's true colors, your friends' true colors. Your life's calling that you believe is supposed to be, which is not the plan that I have for you. <clears throat> I'm showing the true colors. I'm pushing you, literally shoving you <laughs> into the right direction. Some of us, it takes a real big shove. An example for us is we bought some property. We thought it was going to be our dream property. Beautiful piece of land. Took a lot of work to get it fixed. We had to do, my husband had to take the tractor and we had to cut the grass on it with the zero turn multiple times. We had to have crews of people going in there. We paid them to come in, cut the grass, cut down trees, cut down brush. But the view, the view was gorgeous. We built a whole house from a garage thinking this was our plan. I had that nagging feeling the whole time in my stomach. I was like, this just didn't feel like home yet. I just didn't feel comfortable there. And I didn't know why. We started to work on more of the property. And before we started getting into the finalization of it, we had a huge stop. Get into the details about it, but needless to say, not all people are nice, not all people are very kind. People that want to get their way sometimes will go above and beyond reproach of their own 
himself in their own soul. I forgive them for what they did to, to us and towards us. Because when we sat back and thought about it, talked about it, obviously, it was God's way. He put his hand up and was stop. Stop right there and then, you know, put a halt to everything. This was my dream. Greenhouse and place for the hogs and the place for all the chickens and the ducks. And it all came to a screeching halt. And worse. We're currently looking to sell. Find another place. Just because God put his hand up and said, No, this is not for you. This is not your story. As much as we wanted it to be, we liked it to be, we worked hard to make it our story in our life. He put a stop up that <laughs> it, it would have put an elephant down. It, our life just came to a complete, utter wreck and standstill. God has a way. He has our backs. He knows our lives and our dreams. And He knows our hearts and our souls. And He knows the people that have His back, that believe in Him, that come to Him and turn to Him. And believe me, I'm guilty. Just like anybody else, I am guilty. I am a sinner, straight up and down. If you say you're not a sinner, I will call you a barefaced liar. Why? Because we all sin. There is all times when we look at somebody and go, hmm. Mm. We don't have the right to judge, but we do all the time. We don't have the right to make the decisions on God's behalf on what our life should be. And we really shouldn't fight Him to make our dreams come true. We should follow the path that He tries to take us. It's not always clear. That means we're not close enough to Him. We're not listening. We're not doing what we should to follow His Word and to hear His heart, His words. We're not quiet enough in our own self. There are too many fake people, bullies, liars in this world, and God gave all of us free will to live and talk and say how we should. Stop.
workers of inequity. Unless the Lord had been my help, my soul had almost dwelt in silence. I apologize. I, sometimes I can't read my own writing. Let me read that again. Unless the Lord had been my help, unless he'd been help for the person that is Jehovah asking, unless God had been on his side, his soul would have been in silence. No words would have been spoken. Nothing would have happened if the Lord hadn't been on his side. And if he didn't turn to the Lord also. In eight, verse 18, it says, When I said, My foot slippeth, thy mercy, O Lord, held me up. When he slipped, God was right there to help catch him and to make sure his dreams continued to stay true and his strength and his his belief in himself and in, it, in God and his family and humanity. He held him up. In verse 19, in the multitude of my thoughts within me, Thy comforts delight my soul. We all have all these thoughts in our minds all the time. And a lot of times our minds will run a million miles an hour, day and night. We're constantly worrying about things that we can't do anything about. I'm guilty. I'm guilty. <laughs> but when we lean on Him, we hear his voice and his words his words comfort us because that's what he's here for that's what he wants to do for us he wants to comfort us and he's not here to give us a hard time in life that's mankind that's the devil and the devil comes right up in and says you know what I'm gonna make life fun for you and you know why because I know that you enjoy the bad things in life the, the things that you know you shouldn't be doing that will bring you away from his good graces you know we are all sinners and the devil will do whatever it takes to pull us away from God and His good graces, but it just takes one word, one phrase, let me say, forgive me, Lord, of all my sins. My heart is yours, my soul. I'm leaving it all on the table for you. If you say this for Him, if you put everything out, from your heart and your soul to Him. Bury your heart and soul and say, God, this is my life. I know you see it. I know you can read it. I know you've watched my life fall apart. And I know I'm a big part of the reason why it fell apart. I wanted to do this and I wanted to do that. Did I ever ask you? Did I ask you? Did you want me to do this or to go in this direction? More likely not. I know I, I'm very well guilty, like so many of us all. But he wants our dreams to come true. He's already got this amazing life for us all. If we would just see it and be open to what he has to say. If we listen to him and we stay close to him. When doubt fills our minds and our heart is in tur turmoil, he eases our souls. He renews our hope just by letting him know we're here. 
if you just let everything go and let him have it, things may not be different tomorrow morning when you wake up or t tonight, but things will be better. Things will be different. And he will make sure that your life and how things go for you, your dreams, to what should happen for you, will happen if you trust and believe in him. <clears throat> you have to turn to him when you start becoming filled with that. And you need to ask God to lead you in his ways and to allow you to see his righteous path. See his path. See 